happy. Okay, this is old Cam. And this is Joyce Not a Spring Tick Tale, and this is our review of the movie Immortals. Yeah, of which she got to see uh, the, pre the preview of it, and I just got to read the script. So. <laughs> well, actually, I've been waiting for this movie to come out for a very long time for two reasons. One is I saw it at Comic Con, the preview of it. Yeah. So I actually got to see a screening panel with Frida, Pam Frida Pinto, uh, Stephen Dorff, Henry Cavill, and uh, oh, yeah, Luke Allen. Luke Evans and Kellen Lutz. Yeah. And so they were all there. Oh, and well, besides that, Tarsem Singh was there and Mark Kanman. Yeah, and and the and the reviews are basically they're mixed on it in the fact that it's basically it's okay, it's better than they expected to be, but not as good as they'd hoped because they're what it is is the uh, director of the movie is somewhat miffed. He's getting tired of people comparing this movie to the 300. Because there is no comparison, folks. That's what well, he says. But it says in the media material that you look at that it's from the producers. I know, but he's wanting. He, he said it's it's damaging to the movie to continue to compare it to another movie that isn't the same. This is a this movie is a 3D movie and it is effects driven. Where uh, the other movie was not a 3D movie and it was basically graphic arts driven. So. Well, one of the things I will tell you is that if you're going to see this movie, catch it in the three, the theater in 3D because the special effects that it has in the theater and what they do, yeah, it, it well, let's just say it's great in 3D. Well, generally, movies made for 3D don't translate well into 2D, as we've discovered. Well, you know, this one when when I was exiting the screen, I was I overheard a couple people say, um, "Don't they make any 3D movies in 3D?" and in the credits it says it was created 3D. Yeah. So it probably looks good both in 2D as well as 3D. Yeah, but the effects are designed for 3D. They're not, okay, the Transformers is a perfect example. Yeah. The, the 3D effects there do not, work, even though, okay, say they're artist-generated effects, they're artist-generated effects to be seen in 3D. Mm -hmm. And when you flatten them out, they don't look as right. They don't, yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, you can tell when they're looking at the filming because it's, especially because of the way the focus is, yeah. that it was created 3D. Um, and also because of the slow motion. Now, when you think about blood and guts, you think of something that's really gory. I yeah. will tell you that other than the suspended blood... Yeah. Wait. This one's real high, so... Yeah. Well, I think the, sus the suspended blood in 3D, I have to tell you... Okay. Okay. I, I admit I do not like slasher movies. I don't like horror films, but it was kind of cool. Yeah. And maybe it's because we've seen that camera and we've seen it working. This is a, the I think it's a Photon or Phaeton. Yeah. We're the same group um, that we've seen at um, NAB that works with the Olympics. Yeah. So we've actually we know the people that create the equipment. We've seen the equipment. We uh, you know because but you know, it's not being desensitized because. She was trying to get me to go with her, but last night was rather an oddball night for reviewing of things, folks. Yeah, and I mean, visually, it's stunning. It's an epic, definitely. Um, as far as the actors go, oh, one of the things about Immortals, they had mentioned this at the Comic-Con. Oh, and then we'll get to tell you about the actual story. Is typically when you think of Immortals and the Greek gods, you think of people, old guys. You think of old guys, right? They all were old guys. <laughs> But as they were saying, you know, if you're immortal, why don't you make yourself look younger? <laughs> That's the, the okay. Um, the, the thing was, if I remember historically, you basically aged at a rate that was far less than the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So therefore, at that time, they they if you were an old person, you would have been an old person. If you were a young person when you became immortal, you'd have been a young person for thousands of years. So that there there was a little bit of I mean okay. Let's put it this way, they don't follow their Greek legends very well. <laughs> well, is that why they call them modern Greek legends? Yeah. It definitely is a Greek legend for yeah. modern times with, of course, a twist. Yeah. Well, they didn't have that type of stuff in those days, so... You know, they didn't have the arm... Okay, nothing you see on the screen could have possibly existed in that time period. The armor was wrong, the costumes were wrong, everything is basically based on, on making a movie, not on being historically accurate. 
Yeah, yeah, I would agree with you to that. It's not a, it's, it's not, it's more for entertainment. Yeah, and well. And there's no Trojan horse on this, but there is a silver, is it cow or bull? Yeah, <laughs> well, no, that deer. would have been the bull of Taurus or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. But actually, while you're talking, talking about the bull of Taurus, much of this movie has to do with searching for the long lost bow of um, the pirate. Yeah. Yeah. And so, in the movie, of course, Henry Cavill plays Theseus, who is slated for the next Superman movie. Yep. I think I said somebody said that they could see that he would make. Uh, <laughs> they didn't say he would make a good diarrhea. They didn't say he would make a good hero in this movie. They said that it looks like he'll make a good Superman, <laughs> which is not what you want to have him say. I liked him in the role, but here's the funny part is when I was watching it, I was thinking I can hardly wait to see him at Superman. Uh, and, and doesn't anybody, here, here's a good question. Why do all of these people speak with British accents? Yeah, for some reason, well, this is Greece though. But they're not speaking with a Grecian accent, no. they're speaking with a distinctly British accent. But what does a Greek person sound like with their accent? I don't know. Yeah, I know, but he doesn't sound like he's born and raised in you know, in, in Wales. Ah. So, this is good low. This one's really low. And true to form with many of the Greek mythology, the gods or the immortals are not supposed to, let's see, um, interrupt? Yeah, they're not supposed to interfere. Interfere with what's going on with mankind. That's all they do is interfere. Anybody ever seen Jason and the Argonauts <laughs> and those things where they have chess pieces, they're moving people around? They're nothing but mean-spirited little fun makers. I mean, I mean, them and Loki of the of the Nordic gods, Russian, would have all got along well. Boy, look at this one. Yeah, boy, look at that one, folks. Being covered in love. Look at her. Yeah, we've got 20 foot above the, the highway. Okay, that's the lowest <laughs> one so far since we're, I mean, we're, we're having fun while we're doing our review. So also on there, uh, Frida Pinto, who was a Slumdog Millionaire, who plays an oracle. Yeah. Luke Evans, who was in The Raven, who's in um, the upcoming movie, The Raven, which yeah. is also by Relativity Media, and who was in The Three Musketeers. Yeah. Kellen Lutz played Poseidon. Yeah. And he's also in the Twilight movie. Yeah. And John Hurt, which you're very familiar with. Yeah, he's been around for, oh God, he's been in everything you can think of, folks. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part one and two, and Mickey Rourke plays King Hyperion, who was in The Wrestlers. Yeah, which I think they like Mickey Rourke. You know what? He plays as King Hyperion, ruthless. Oh, actually, you know what I like? I loved his ma um, his headpiece. Yeah. Because on his headpiece, they have these, like, uh, what do you call it? Um, snakes or something? No. Like tentacles or... Oh, they are kind of like tentacles. They stick out. So basically, it protects, you know, you don't have a very side to side vision, but it basically protects his head. Probably called a Greek war helmet. Oh, maybe. But it's never like any Greek helmet I've ever seen. <laughs> it, no, well, nothing in the movie is like anything you've seen. But they're, he, they're rewriting Greek mythology in the modern day movie. But he is definitely on a rampage, and this is someone you definitely don't want to cross. Yeah. Because, well, let's just say... He leaves his mark everywhere he goes. I know, but I don't, I don't think Zeus is much afraid of him in real life, though. Well, Zeus was never afraid of him, but, you know, he makes his, you know, his uh, travels looking for this long... It's this sort of like the, uh, the, the, in Jason and the Argonauts, where they sent Jason, the, the king sent Jason out on a tw quest to find the Golden Fleece, and hoping he'd die in the process. Well, and then the, oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Well, he's looking for this bow because he wants to defeat the gods of Olympus, and he wants yep. to become the undisputed master of the world. So, yep. in other words, it's all about power. I know. And Henry Cavill, which is Theseus, he wants to avenge his mother, who King, who King Hyperion or Mickey Rourke. Uh, anybody think of Jason and the Argonauts again? <laughs> Jason wanted to avenge his, his, you know, he wanted to kill the guy that killed his mother, who happened to be the king. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? But you know, part of it is, is they talk about um, Theseus being what? He's just a commoner. He's just a stonemason. Well, let's put it differently. He's not just a stonemason. He's avenging the death of his mother, 
But his mother, well, let's let's just go to his father. Yeah. <laughs> his fathers are, um, well, actually, let's just say his mother was with two immortals. One was Poseidon. Yeah. And one of okay, I'm looking for the name of it right now. Anyway, one of one of the other immortals. She was actually with two of them. I think it was the eighty. It was the eighty. Okay. And so they don't even know who the father actually was. Oh, you mean sort of like Hercules? The mortals didn't mess, didn't dally with the people, but they had an awful lot of children. Oh, is that what happened? Well, that was way up high, so don't bother with him. <laughs> I know. They dally with the girls. They, oh. they appear to, they appear as their husbands or whatever, have a good time with them, and then all of a sudden you have an, a half, a half mortal, half immortal. Which is one of the reasons that Zeus keeps watching over him because he's one of them yeah even though he's sort of like our president what do you mean well he's only half an immortal and our president's only half a god so oh. so anyway with the three divinsel's help or the oracle yeah. he goes on his path to well let's just say in search of the bow and he, he actually finds the boat when he goes to give his mother the proper burial yeah let's put it yeah, let's put it that way. Mm. But as, what, as it continues... <laughs> yeah, he must have, since there must have been early in the picture and he loses the bow. No, he never had, well, okay, he does lose the bow. I figured that. Which is how King Hyperion has it, and so then they're trying to go get the bow back. Yeah. But, you know, here's part of it is, this is the great tragedy, is that if the gods can interfere, wouldn't you interfere before the bad guy got the bow? They never did on Hercules for six seasons on the television, so oh. they only interfered after everything was lost. So I know it's just. I always like, kind of wondered that part. Like if you know the future, can't you change the future? Well, I would think you could. Mm. But but here's the trick: is if you interfere, is your interference what caused it to happen to begin with? See. Ah. That's, that's how it works. Does your inter is your interference the spark that made everything happen? So do you not interfere or interfere? So it basically makes you impotent as far as being a god is concerned. Ah, so anyway, what does happen, as you can guess, is after he has the bow, he, well, let's, let's just say he makes his impression, and he unleashes the power of the sleeping titans, of Ooh. which the immortals do have to come to the rescue. And as... Okay. Said, this is not your battle, this is ours. Because they imprisoned the Titans, mm -hmm. of whom once was one was Poseidon. Oh really? Poseidon was one of the guys he was you know, he he was a he was a Titan. Oh. So I remember he lives in the ocean and only would come out upon the bidding of Zeus. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, so the, this this ti this Poseidon who walks around on the ground like everybody else does name. Which one? This Poseidon walks around. No, he around. doesn't. He's up with the mortals. No, but that's what I mean. He he basically, Poseidon is the god of the ocean. He basically has to pull around there all the time. Well, we are out in the ocean today. That's why we're doing this, in honor of Poseidon and the immortals. <laughs> and we're showing you airplanes coming in over our heads. The, the movie is predictable. Well, well it's, 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 Greek it's, it's a Greek mythology. It's a Greek, it's okay. Um, we'll put it this way. In the ninth, late 50s and 60s, I used to work on the signs of Hercules things. Yeah. And basically, if you worked on one, you worked on every single one of them. Well, they all had the same structure, so. Oh, it is predictable. But you know what? It is, I mean, this is a movie to see in 3D. Yeah. I, I did not, think, first of all, I'm not really one for blood and guts, and I thought I would really not like it at all. Yeah. Uh, but I actually did really like the effect on it. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, uh, I said the the reviews are that people it basically got rotten reviews I mean it's a uh, 40% rotten reviews but the people that they said that if you get in the theater it's more than what you thought it was going to be because the reviewers are basically uh, you either have you, you got a lot of reviewers that don't like here's the problem is a lot of them do not like 3d they'll give you well it would have been better if it had been done in 2d well, they can go watch the 2D version. Yeah. <laughs> well, if they go to the 3D version, because that's what the um, the producers want you to see. They get they send you into the 3D 
version. Isn't that a riptide right there? Look at it out there. But I, I will tell you that it's, it's cool to see it in 3D. Yeah. Um, I was fortunate I brought my own um, 3D you're glasses right. with me. Your, which set? Gunners or the Edders? Oh, uh, I actually brought Calvin Klein's March on the Gunners. Oh, okay. So you had, similar to look so neat, you had all of these in it, so. Yeah. But it was, so. it, you know, it's just one of those movies that yeah. you can truly appreciate it on the big screen. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, and in 3D. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the difference, too, is, um, okay. There is, all movie screens are not made the same because the other night we were watching, actually a couple of days ago, we watched the uh, the Warriors on a really big screen. Yeah. But we've been watching movies on screens that are about half that size. Uh, and the bigger the screen, like uh, we've also seen the movies, uh, IMAX versions of some of these things, and IMAX so dwarfs everything else that it's unreal. Yeah. So, but... You know, is it something you you would pay money to go see if you were paying money? If I had the extra money, yes. Well, yeah, because we actually... It, 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 okay, where would we be right now if we weren't here? Where would we be? We'd have been over at the opening performance of Immortals this morning. Oh, oh that's true. Yeah, if we weren't doing the review right now, we would have been over there. That's right, so... Because it is. It's, 